Hey friends, I'm Angela Braniff. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my baby must-haves as well as some of my regrets for the newborn to three-month-old stage. All right, so if you're new here, really quickly, I'm a mom of eight kiddos. I have done the newborn thing six times. Um, we've adopted and we have biological children. And so out of all of my eight children, I've had them in my home from the newborn stage uh, for six of them. The main reason I say that is because this is not my first rodeo and my oldest child is 13 years old. So I have seen baby products go from like very simplistic kind of things and then to what they've gotten to now with so much stuff so many options. The fact that there is like a bed bath and beyond for baby stuff, it's like a magical wonderland of baby stuff and it's also super overwhelming. And again, before we get in, I'm gonna take you guys around my house and show you stuff. Um, so I'm not just gonna stand here and hold it up. I am gonna take you guys around and show you stuff, but I also want to mention that that while I'm making this video, I do think it's really important to know circumstances, budget, that's all gonna affect these things, as well as your child. Like what your baby likes and works for you might be totally different than for somebody else. So I want to also add the caveat that if you want them and you can afford to buy them and you want them, buy what you want, do what you want. I've talked about this before, but with our twins, when I was pregnant with our twins after we struggled with secondary infertility, um, and I found out that we were having these twin girls, I kind of went all out as far as baby stuff. I bought a ton of baby stuff and we used a lot of it with two babies. We really did use a lot more baby stuff because for whatever reason, sometimes two babies feels like 10 babies. I don't know why that happens or how that happens. They like multiply like rabbits or something, but it feels like you have a lot more than just two babies with two. So we did need a lot more gadgets and stuff like that. So maybe I'll make a separate video and talk about the things that we loved for twins. If you guys would be interested in that, let me know down below in the comments. But for Singleton Baby and Little Mr. Benjamin specifically, this is stuff that we just love to have around and stuff that we just found very useless. Now that I've made another long-winded intro with all kinds of disclaimers, let's get into it. All right, so if you've ever had a baby or had a baby shower or been gifted baby things, you know that blankets are just abundant in the baby world. There are so many different blankets and swaddles and wraps and all this kind of stuff to choose from. And even the swaddle aisle now is very overwhelming. Here's what I will say. And I also am pulling a little bit of this experience as well from my days as a newborn photographer. I would do a lot of like tight swaddling of babies in my newborn photography business. All of these kind of over the top swaddles with lots of like Velcro and stuff like that. Babies bust out of those. They're like little tiny Houdinis. I mean, they can get out of all kinds of situations. It's almost scary at times how you're like, I wrapped you so tight, how did you get out of that? And they're like, huh. Anyways, these particular swaddles are amongst my very favorites. This brand is Copper Pearl. You can get them on their website, but you can also get them on Amazon, which is great. You can use your Prime shipping and all of that, but these Copper Pearl swaddles are basically just a giant, very stretchy, fabric and this really gives you the give that you need uh, when you're swaddling a baby okay you need to do it a, a lot tighter than you think you do and people i feel like with tiny babies often kind of feel panicky like oh, i don't want to hurt them you're not going to hurt them they love that like really tight tight swaddle feeling um, and so these stretchy ones really allow you to get in under that arm tuck it in really tight and get in under this arm, tuck it in really tight, wrap it around. And they just look like a little sausage encasing and they're happy as clams. A lot of animal references in this video, don't know why. So when it comes to just regular swaddling, that's hands down my favorite. The second piece of that though, and we started using these with our twins and we call these, we call these their stingray suits. This is the love to dream swaddle. And I was skeptical about this, you guys. It goes against all my tight swaddling nature, like everything I know about tight swaddling. However, as my twins got older and way, way stronger, right? Way more able to tear out of even the best swaddle job. This, it zips, no Velcro, don't stay away from Velcro. It's a liar, okay? Zips, and it allows them, because at some point your babies do not want to sleep like mummies, right? With their arms down or like this, even though we've all seen that Facebook video of that baby that the dad swaddles really tight and then unwraps her and every morning she shoots her arms up and smiles. It's the cutest thing ever. Um, but 
This allows them to kind of sleep with their arms up like this, which they like to do, but it puts enough tension so that they're not jerking, snapping, and like waking themselves up with their falling reflex is basically what that is. That's why when you hold a newborn baby and they're like, they do this number here and you're like, what are you doing? It's, it's their falling reflex, right? It's like they feel like they're falling. So they kind of do this like you would do if you were falling. There's a lot of things happening in those tiny little brains, a lot of things firing and connecting and trying to figure out the world around them where they are no longer floating in water. Now they can free fall. So they got to figure all that out. And to do that, they do a lot of like twitching and reflex stuff. So ways that we can help them through that without just stuffing them down our shirts and holding them all the time, which don't get me wrong, is a wonderful pastime and a great way to use your time, especially as a new mom. But if you need some hands, go for some different swaddles and these two are my favorite. Move on down to the next drawer down here. We're gonna talk about burp rags, okay? There's a lot of burp rags on the market. I did buy a lot of the copper swirl swirl nope copper pearl burp rags for the twins however nothing will ever beat the absorbency of just these little they're like the diaper inserts that are meant for like cloth diapers or whatever uh, it's kind of like a bit of a cheese clothy feeling just buy a big pack of these you can wash them all up together in your whites with your towels or whatever else and these are pretty nice too. These are from the brand Green Sprouts. These I did get at Bye Bye Baby and they have that nice little cutout shape so that they fit well over your shoulder here. And it's just that like pre-fold insert fabric, much, much thicker. Um, but yeah, there's like a fine line with burp rags, man. If they're not absorbent enough, then it's like the puke just kind of sits on top of them and runs off. Just some really good, simple, like pre-fold diaper kind of burp rags all that you need. Okay, into the bathtub we go. There are so many baby tubs on the market. I mean, there are some that are so expensive and I get the pull, right? You see the ones that like take the temperature for you and do all this kind of stuff. And that's great. And again, depending on your home and all of that kind of stuff is gonna determine really what bath is best. But I will tell you that as far as affordability um, and usefulness and practicality, oh my God. I'm gonna fall in. This little guy right here is worth every penny. I think this is $14.99 at Target um, and it's the Angel Care bath. And guys, listen, it's so nice. It's just got the little mesh here. You set it down, you fill up your tub, you lay your baby in it and away you go. It's really not that hard to get the right temperature for your bath. Um, I feel like that's just kind of one of those things that there's lots of different ways that you can test with like the inside palm of your hand or your elbow or different spots you can test to make sure you're not making the water too hot. So I feel like some of those more expensive tubs are really just it's a lot of money and it's really not necessary. And the other thing is that if you guys have ever watched our vlog channel, um, when my twins were little, we started using this tub for them. I got them so used to laying back like this and just sitting in this thing and laying back for baths that they did it until they were one and a half maybe even closer to two. I had them believing that there was no such thing as sitting up in the tub or standing up in the tub or anything else. They would get in and lay down in this thing and let me wash them and then get them out. If you've ever heard me talk about it, in our house we do a lot of fast baths with eight kids. We just don't spend a lot of time doing a bunch of play baths and stuff like that. It was really nice because it was very no nonsense. They would just get in, lay down, I would wash them and they would get out. Um, so they did eventually discover that that was not the only way that you could be in the tub. Okay, so next on my must have list is a fantastic baby carrier. Baby wearing has just saved me over the years with having three kids under three right now and in different phases, like I said, with eight kids total, kind of 13 down to four months old. There have been lots of seasons of life where I've had lots of little kids and um, with homeschooling as well, needing to have hands free, baby carriers are just, my cat is licking the tripod, I'm sorry. You want a cat carrier? You want me to wear you in a baby carrier? We could show them how it works. Come here, uh-huh, now you leave. A good baby carrier is worth its weight in gold. People ask me all the time, I don't know how you do stuff or how you get stuff done with the kids and the, baby carriers, baby wearing. Um, I still wear my toddlers from time to time. We're not gonna get into that right now. We're just talking about that newborn to three months. So I've got two carriers to show you really quickly. In our entry coat closet here, I have a basket at the top for baby carriers. They're accessible to me when I'm downstairs and doing stuff as well as 
it's a quick reminder when we're about to throw on our coats and leave to make sure I throw one in the car as well. So my two favorites for the newborn to three month old stage are a wrap. Um, this one is the Solly wrap. And I fully know that these are super intimidating. I was very intimidated by wrap carriers for a long time. There is a lot of fabric here. When you unravel this, it's like Rapunzel's hair. And you're just thinking like, how in Hades am I gonna get this thing wrapped around me with a baby? Once you've done it a few times, it really does become second nature. It's just a matter of putting it on very tightly. It needs to be on very tightly. Once you put that baby in there and their weight starts to weigh down on it, it will loosen up. So getting it in the right position often, and I'm guilty of this too, we'll put carriers too low, um, strap them too low. They need to, in something like this, you need to be able to look down and kiss the top of their head here. So a lot of times you'll see people in carriers like this and the baby's like all the way down here and people will say, well, it hurts their back and all this stuff. It's because you're carrying the weight of that in the wrong spot on your back. So putting them up nice and high right here where you can just lean down and kiss their head. They should be tucked in here, not down here. There are so many videos on YouTube about how to use these, how to wrap, all of that. Just take some time, watch them, practice. Practice with the baby doll, practice with your cat, practice with your dog, whatever you wanna practice with. Although I warn you, the cat will probably scratch you, so maybe don't practice with your cat. But the, the wrap, fantastic, love that. For me, that's best for like very teeny babies. Once they get a little bit bigger, this is a new wrap to me. I've always kind of been in that limbo where I used that and then you would either have to buy the infant insert for something like a regular ergo or you can go to a sling wrap, which I have one of those. We're not gonna talk about in this video because that's not the age that I like it for. I got one of these for Benjamin and it's an ergo baby and it is meant for it being carried as young as a newborn. And the way that instead of having inserts and rolling up, I've done the thing where you like roll up towels and put it in the bottom to like hike them up. Um, you actually just roll this carrier piece here. And then you have this part that buckles around your lower your lower back, like your waist area um, and, and snaps. And this gives you so much support. And then these soft straps, they just cross over in the back and snap. You can totally do it yourself. You don't need help to do it. It's easy to put on by yourself. And you've got this body of it in the inside is nice and small for a tiny baby. So I'll put here on the screen what the weight limitations on this are because you can keep wearing them in it for quite a while. I mean, like when you don't have it rolled up, it's a fairly large carrier. So Benjamin's 18 pounds and I can still very comfortably wear him in this. Again, I will leave these both linked down below if you wanna check them out, but these are two of my very favorite um, baby carriers. And that's just a must have for me as a way to wear my babies so that I've got some hands free to eat and sometimes even to just go pee like I think all of my children have have been in some form or fashion of a carrier while I went pee it's just as a mom you do what you have to do you know all right so when it comes to newborn must-haves I feel like we can all agree that sleep is just critical okay it's critical for all involved babies need to sleep parents need to get some sleep um, so I am a little bit surprised that I didn't discover these or start using these until my eighth child. I don't know how well if my other children would have loved them as much. And I do think that part of the reason this one in particular worked so well for us is because of Benjamin's um, reflux and LM and needing to be on his stomach for his airway and all of that kind of stuff. But these products have just become like ultimate loves for me. So this is a Moses basket and it is from the brand um, Design DUA, I believe. I bought, by the way, in case I didn't mention it, everything in this video I bought myself. None of the stuff was gifted to me um, or sponsored in any way. This is all stuff I bought with my own monies and just giving you my genuine thoughts on it. So um, this, I just absolutely loved this Moses basket. It was so helpful when he was really tiny and I could just move him from room to room. Inside of it, I put a snuggle me organic. A lot of times people put in their beds and lay on the bed and stuff for the baby to sleep in. With so many kids and dogs and all of that, like we just couldn't, we needed him to be a little bit protected and not so exposed. So, but also mobile. 
is we're going from like the homeschool room to the living room to the kitchen in different places. So he slept in this basket a ton when he was really tiny. And with that snuggle me in there, it really does just kind of like snuggle around their little shoulders and upper body and just really make them feel really nice and tightly snuggled. I just loved it. I absolutely loved it for him. Then when he started really developing all of his reflux issues and um, his LM started to become a struggle, this basket, I'm gonna tell you guys a little something. I didn't know I ordered it, okay? This is what happened. I ordered that, and then this came too. And to this day, I can't tell you if that was, if I paid for both or if they accidentally sent me this. I don't know what happened. And I remember when this came, I was like, what am I gonna do with that? I have a flat basket, what am I gonna do with that? This is now the most used baby item of all time in our house. <laughs> like he loves this thing and sleeps in it all the time. He also plays in it sometimes from that like newborn to three month when they're not really rolling over yet or moving a whole lot. Um, we could set him in this, like if we're all sitting at the dining room table eating and hanging out, um, we could lay him in this. And especially when you're first doing like tummy time and they're holding their heads up at like that six to eight weeks area, you know, he could just kind of sit up and look around and he loved to be on his tummy. A lot of babies hate it, but he loved to be on his tummy because it made it feel better for him. So it has arguably like that's his favorite way to be even now, like you'll lay him on his back and he'll roll over to his stomach as soon as he gets the opportunity. But this thing, man, I cannot even tell you what a lifesaver this basket has been and it's like it's his bed you know he loves to sleep in it and to him it signals bedtime for him so much more use out of this than I ever thought that I would like I said when it first came I was like what am I gonna do with this um, and it just we just use the pad in it that it comes with and you can take this off and wash it um, and a lot of times we'll lay a blanket down over this now um, just so this isn't scratchy at all but you just never know, you know what I mean? So I think it's like a seagrass. I could be wrong, it could be something totally different, but seagrass feels right, so we're gonna go with that. And uh, we will sometimes lay a blanket over it, but it's really never like scratched him and it doesn't really feel scratchy, but just in cases, you know what I'm saying? All right, let's go into the kitchen. I've got another lifesaver, it's in the kitchen. All right, so hopefully through the magic of videography, you can't see all the flour that's on, on here. My daughter just made a chocolate cake and they made a big mess. This is one of those things that is not going to be a must have or useful for everybody, but I just wanted to share it because, but I really wanted to share about it because we used it with the twins and loved it and then used it again now with Benjamin and still just absolutely love it. I know that there is a lot of, I don't wanna say controversy, but there's a lot of people People who've had issues with these it's one of those things that like I totally get it um, we've gotten a good one it works it works well it mixes the formula properly um, so basically because I've been droning on and not telling you what this is this is the baby Brezza or in this house we refer to this as the baby Keurig and basically it makes baby bottles for you. You put your formula in here, you put your water in here, you put the bottle here and you choose your ounces at the top there two four six eight ten start and away we go it drops in the formula drops in the water you mix it up you're good to go um, and it keeps the water at a nice warm not too not too warm but warm temperature so you're getting a warm bottle um, it's just this was so so amazing with twins like i said i might do a totally separate video about things i really loved for twins but this was amazing for twins but it's been really great for a singleton too so if you have a baby that is formula fed the twins were a combination of breastfeeding and formula feeding and benjamin has been a combination of breastfeeding and formula feeding um, or breast milk we got donor breast milk for him so we've done donor breast milk and formula um, but this thing is just so nice and it makes it helpful too for like like if you have slightly older kids that are helping you out or something, you know, I can send one of my older kids in here and say, can you make Benjamin a four ounce bottle? And all they have to do is stick it under there and hit start and it's good. So you do have a little thing inside of here and you set the number based on, you have to tell, you basically have to look it up to see what type of formula you're using. It will tell you what number to set that in because depending on the thickness and stuff of the formula itself, um, and you're using powdered formula in here, but depending on the thickness will kind of determine um, how much it lets out and all of that. And it determines that based on the brand of the formula. So that's all stuff that when you use the machine. But I know when I shared about this a couple years ago when we got it, I, you know, feedback from people just saying like, I've, I've heard that it doesn't work. Sometimes it will mix the formula incorrectly or babies are losing weight. Like obviously you need to watch all those things. But uh, I and a few of my friends have had these and used them as well and have all loved them and not had any problems. So it is something that you need to be like careful of and cognizant of, but I do think it's a really amazing product and we have 
we've absolutely loved having it. All right, so those are some of my love and must-have products. Let's talk about some of my regrets. And again, I just feel necessary to remind you that just because it didn't work for me doesn't mean that it won't work for you. I'm not saying it's a bad product. I'm just saying it didn't work well for me. You do you, so. Okay, let's talk really quickly about this very large, very expensive elephant in the room. This is the Snoo um, bassinet, and this was very expensive very expensive and the reason that i'm putting this on my regret list is not because i don't think that it's a valuable product or a good product in fact i would argue that if you have if you have an, a very healthy typical baby then you will probably love this thing it is pretty amazing However, our son Benjamin had very severe reflux, as well as another issue that kind of dealt with his airway and his ability to breathe well when he was laying down on his back. So basically for us, this was a giant waste of money. Um, but for us, it just turned into like the world's most expensive blanket holder. Sometimes I would set wipes and diapers in here or something, but I, I used it for him a couple of times, but it never worked the way it should for us because his health reasons he just couldn't and i even bought the um there's some extenders that go on the feet to prop it up a little bit if you do have a baby that's a little bit refluxy and you need to kind of get their head up which would again probably work for some mild reflux but really severe reflux just was not worth it for us because of his severe reflux and we tried everything to make it work and we just couldn't now my friend l has a wonderful review video of this because she used it for her daughter um, who's her third child and they loved it it worked beautifully Beautifully. I don't know, I just feel some responsibility to tell you guys that um, this just didn't work for us because we did buy it when we first brought Benjamin home and I shared it with you guys and everything, but I just wanted you to know that it didn't end up working out for us. It doesn't mean it won't for you, but it is a huge investment. All right, so on my regret list, unfortunately, is this For Moms Mamaroo, which is missing the little um, mobile piece here because literally the day we bought it, my twins snapped it off. Um, however, again, I think this is something that is very situational to Benjamin and just the fact that with his reflux and his LM, like he just wasn't comfortable on his back. He really wanted to be on his belly for almost everything, naps and all of that. And we ended up using the basket to be able to allow him to be on his belly with the approval of his doctor and everything because it was just better for his airway, a uh, better way that he could turn his head to be able to breathe. So this was another item that was just very expensive and didn't work for us. So uh, I'm putting it on my regret list because it was very expensive between the snoo and this thing. I mean, that's a lot of money on items that didn't work for our family or for our baby. So what I'm hoping maybe you'll takeaway is that you are looking at these products that you definitely don't have to go out and spend the most money on everything just because it's the most expensive doesn't mean that your baby's even going to like it. This was another one that just didn't work for us and again not because it's a bad product by any means. The twins probably would have loved this when they were babies. They loved their swing. We had one of the Graco swings that ended up getting recalled so we don't have those anymore which is why we decided to get this and this was like two times the price and Benjamin just never really like warmed to it and loved it you know decisions have to be made about what to do with it all right let's take a quick moment to talk about baby clothes now listen okay i don't have a lot of baby Th these are my son's uh my four month old son's clothes they fit right here this is where i'm going to come back to what i said earlier about doing what works for you but i will say that I remember when I was buying clothes for the twins, people were like, you're buying way too many clothes. They're gonna grow out of those. You're gonna have way too many newborn clothes. Here's the thing, I thought, well, probably not because they're twins. They're probably gonna be small. They're probably gonna be born early. They'll be able to wear their newborn clothes for a long time. And all of my kids previously wore their newborn clothes for a long time. However, obviously for some people, this is absolutely true. I know this because on my eighth child, I learned this the hard way. I just ended up buying him clothes that he barely ever wore, wore one time because he grew so fast. I could not believe it. I'm telling you guys, he wore newborn clothes for maybe a week and he was under seven pounds. He was like in the high six pound range when he was born. He was not a big baby at birth. He just grew really, really fast. And that is still the case for him today. He's an 18 pound, four month old. He's a big boy and he grows out of clothes really fast. So in that newborn phase, here's what I will say. 
I ended up this time feeling like I wasted a lot of money because I bought him some nicer things. Um, you know, I bought him some loved baby outfits, which are some of my favorite baby outfits that zip up. I'll link those as well below. Um, I don't have any for him right now because he just grows out of them so fast and they're kind of expensive, but they are some of my favorites. I think that it's going to be individual for everybody, but for this time around, I just found that just buying a few simple outfits and then kind of seeing whether or not your baby grows really fast or doesn't will help you to determine and then you can go buy more if you need more newborn clothes then go buy more um, that's a that would be a great way to do it as well as far as what I look for in baby clothes I definitely love a good zipper outfit um, I don't like surprising is what I'm holding here I don't like a lot of like characters or writing on clothes um, for my kids anymore I used to do that I've kind of gotten away from that and I really like more simple things um, H&M baby has some really great basics like this is just a little navy um, onesie type outfit I, I try not to do buttons where I can but that can be hard to get only zip up things but I try to go for zip up things especially in the newborn phase which is really the phase we're talking about in this video is that newborn to three month um, zip up zip up zip up zip up those snaps will wake a sleeping baby and you will be very angry so zip up as much as you can I probably should have filmed this video before I filmed my declutter video because I would have had a lot more to show Show you to explain what I'm talking about but my next like regret if you will is a lot of baby gadgets okay there are so many uh, baby accoutrements on the market these days it's insane like I said you go into bye bye baby and there's walls of stuff that's like what even is that like where did that even come from so baby gadgets I I do love the nose Frida but I'm just using this as an example of there's so many different things out there from wipe warmers to hand mittens just all of these like extras which again if that's if that's what you are wanting to do if you want to spend money on that if you want to have these things if this is your first baby or you know a baby that you've tried so long for like don't let anybody steal that joy from you you buy whatever the heck you want but as far as do you need those things arguably no I've had eight children and have never used baby hand mittens um, I just put a sock on that fool's hand you know just take one of these just take one of these like really tight baby socks slip that over their hand and it stays on better than the mittens anyways if you feel like you need that that's definitely something that despite the fact i don't have a lot of physical things here to show you definitely goes into the regrets list is a lot of like just superfluous little baby item that i didn't need and just didn't end up using benjamin's a simple man okay he has very simple needs he used a lot more stuff with the twins but with benjamin he's an easy breezy lemon squeezy kind of guy you know all right, moving on. Next regret would definitely be any kind of baby towels or washcloths. I finally moved the baby washcloths out of there and into our regular washcloth stash just to use because I don't want them to like go to waste, but we just do not use baby towels or washcloths. Just grab a regular towel, grab a regular washcloth. Trust me, they don't know if it doesn't have a fun animal on it. They don't care over the years it's just kind of one of those items where i've slowly had the realization that i think somebody might just be trying to make a grab at my wallet you know what i'm saying like just use a regular towel or washcloth it doesn't need to be a little bit smaller in order to work for your baby also just a little fun tip maybe if you're a new mom one of my favorite things to do to kind of spoil my little ones at bath time is to take the towel and put it in the dryer while I'm giving them a bath so that when they're ready to get out they've got a nice warm towel though I do feel I should tell you that for some children that will not matter they will still scream and hate getting bathed and hate getting dried and hate getting dressed all right guys so that is it for my baby must-haves and regrets like I said these are just products that worked really well for us or didn't work really well for us not meant to be your Bible of what to purchase or not to purchase just wanted to kind of share my thoughts let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing a video very specifically about twins I know that that's kind of like a very niche kind of thing but maybe people would be interested but that's it for today's video you guys I hope you enjoyed be sure to give it a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe to my channel that's it for today and I will see you all again very soon bye